Hi man, this is an exclusive So anyway, I thought I would revisit radio circuits because this is something I'm also interested in. I'm not just all Tesla coils and high voltage. I find radio circuits pretty interesting as well. So I've built up a little super heterodyne AM receiver, but there's just one vital component missing, and that is the local oscillator. So to fill in for that, I've got this signal generator, and this is going to be the local oscillator because I'm going to do some experiments. Now, there's going to be an extremely long and waffly bit about how the superhet system actually works. So, if I'm starting to bore you, then feel free to skip this part. And I'm not enjoying this either, because I absolutely hate, I loathe, I detest explaining things. And of course I've got to listen to myself yapping on and on and on when I come to edit this thing. But anyway, here's how it works. What I've got here is a coil of wire wrapped around a ferret bar. And this is what pulls in the radio stations. And it's tuned by this variable capacitor here. Now, Usually, in a superhet radio, you'll have two coils. There'll be one that's connected to the variable capacitor, which tunes the thing. And then there's another coil, which actually picks up the radio stations, and that goes into the rest of the circuit. But here, I've simplified things, and I've just combined that all onto one coil, just to keep things simple. Also, if you have a really posh radio, like, say, one that can pick up shortwave, You'll have additional sets of coils for those frequencies, but yeah, we won't go into that right now. Anyway, let's say there's a radio station broadcasting at 1 MHz, and I've got this tuned to 1 MHz. So, what's going to happen is, is it will pick up that 1 MHz station, and it will reject everything else. Well, I say it rejects everything else, it will pick up some of the adjacent frequencies, but not so much. To put it simply, it's kind of a pre-selector, if you will. So, we've got our incoming station, and that goes into the circuit where it is mixed with a frequency from the local oscillator, which in this case is this thing right here. And this mixing produces a third frequency. And on that third frequency, we get a copy of the station that it's tuned into. So basically, we've taken that station and converted it to another frequency. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's a bit stupid. What's the point of that? You know, why would you want to do that? It doesn't seem to, you know. I thought the same way myself when I was learning about this stuff. But there is some pretty good reasons you would want to do that. Well... One thing is, that third frequency that you get never changes. No matter where you're tuned, it always stays the same. So what is that third frequency? Well, it is the difference between the frequency of the incoming radio station and the frequency of the radio's local oscillator. And in most AM radios, that will be either 455 kilohertz higher or 455 kilohertz lower than the frequency that you're actually tuned into so that makes that third frequency 455 kilohertz because that is the difference between the two frequencies the other reason this is a good idea is because we need to amplify that quite a bit however it's much easier to build an amplifier that will amplify one frequency or one narrow band of frequencies than it is to build an amplifier that will amplify a whole range of radio frequencies. So what we have here is in fact a highly tuned amplifier designed to amplify one narrow band of frequencies. And then it's demodulated here by these two diodes pretty much like you would get in a crystal radio and well 
it really is that simple. And another really good thing about that is it makes the tuning really selective so you don't get a whole bunch of stations all coming in at the same time because, let's face it, who wants that when you're listening to the radio? Now, just one more waffly bit before we go into demonstrating this thing. I'd just like to point out that not all radios use 455 kHz as the frequency difference. I mean, most of them do, but some of the older radios, they were, they used 470 kilohertz, and uh, some of the other radios, you know, it could be like 450 kilohertz. Some radios, it could be, you know, it could be 1 megahertz for all you know, but the way it works is exactly the same. But anyway, I think I've waffled enough. So, let's see this thing in action. I'm going to plug this in, I mean, connect up the batteries. You might be able to hear something already. So now I'm going to turn on the quote-unquote local oscillator. And now, let's connect this to the radio circuit. And we have static. And now, PC world. we have a radio our station. Up and transfer all your data. Get started with a new laptop. Find out more online. Is for Curry's PC World, we start with you. Trading conditions apply. Now, Set like I said before, this only is a sort of a like, 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 pre-selector. Like, this is um, the clone of the variable capacitors in a pre-selector. So, as it picks up some of the frequencies either side of where it's actually tuned, we can get another radio station without having to retune this, but just retuning the local oscillator, which is what I'm going to do right now. Hopefully I won't get shafted for any copyrights on this. Let's see if we can find another station. I'm sure there's one around somewhere. Of course, just because I'm trying to shoot a video, let me see. Ah, there's something. It's quite faint. So let's just try to tune the antenna a little better. And there we are. But that's not my kind of music, so. Now, we're going to take some measurements. We're going to see what the IF frequency is, and we're going to have a look at some waveforms. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've got my oscilloscope connected just before the point where it's demodulated, so it's connected right there. Okay, so I think you can see the output from the third IF stage. It's been lovely weather just until before today. It's the heavens keep opening, then the sun and comes up, then see, the heavens open again. The waveform is responding but, uh, have a in time with Lily. I'm going to turn up the time base so we can actually I see. To, to join me for one of my trips down to uh, the old pirate bay. Supposedly 455 kHz waveform. Okay, so I'm going to go up and down the tuning now. And you'll see that the distance between the peaks stays the same. And because the distance between the peaks stays the same, that means the frequency is staying the same. So, we okay, tune in. And see, the frequency does not change. They're exactly the same distance apart. Let's go to another station. Let's go to this one here. Let's we just retune my antenna. And you can see they're the same distance apart. Let's just go to one final station. One, one right about here. Let me just retune. Actually, all we've got here is static, but you can see, again, it's the same. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to try and find out what the IF frequency of this radio is. And for those of you who don't know, the IF frequency is that third frequency that we talked about. So, that's the frequency that gets amplified by the IF amplifier. 
just so you know. And my camera battery is running out already. And I've got the frequency counter, I mean the frequency generator, set to pretty much round about the 400 kilohertz region. Actually, that's on about 420 something kilohertz at the moment. So I'm just going to sweep this up and down until we get the most response out of the oscilloscope. And I've got the output set to as low as it can go because this does have an AGC, so I'm going to try to defeat that. So, let's see what we get. Sorry about the mess in this place, but... Okay. Seems to be around about here, maybe? Seems to be about there we get the most response. Although I cannot tell what that is from the di just the dial there, so let's measure it. And according to the meter's frequency counter, it's 0, 0.000 hertz, so something seems a bit wrong there. Now, I've got this meter connected to my scope's Y output, because I'm using the scope as an amplifier, because there is no way that this meter is going to be able to measure an output this low. It's just not going to be able to do that. So, I'll turn up the scope's sensitivity. All right. And there we are, 447 kilohertz. So it's a little bit off, but it's in the ballpark. So that basically means that when I have a radio station tuned in, the frequency difference is 447 kilohertz, not 455. But we can fix that. Okay, so I've now got the frequency generator set to 455 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modulate in a 1 kilohertz sine wave, or roundabouts. Make that nice and loud. And I'm going to change where I'm scoping the waveform to the output. So I'm now scoping the output. I can just get that in there. So all I've got to do now is adjust these transformers until the one kilohertz or roundaboutish tone is at its loudest. You can hear it very slightly, so I'll just adjust the first IF. Okay, let's go a little bit. I'd say right about there. And now, just a final adjustment while receiving a radio station. Eric Hampton, Bad Love. I am Asian. Just to get the Can best sound Madness quality. Playing that for Sharon tonight, and Foo Fighters learn to fly on the classic rock party. Not going to adjust this Jenny, one. Who loved the indie disco with Andy but Bush, his brand new show, which launched the that one is tuned and to the 455 the the perfect soundtrack for Saturday night baking, apparently. Mm, like to share some pictures of that, Jenny? That would be much appreciated. Uh, you can have this one, yeah, too. Yeah, that seems to be coming in pretty good. Thin Lizzie for a Saturday night. Perfect with the baked sponge, I find. The station Dance seems to be playing some good music. This is the absolute classic rock party. When I paint you in well. the door. I won't play too much of that, because I'll probably get screwed for copyright, but there we go. So, anyway, where am I going to go from here? Well, what I want to do eventually is make this into a shortwave radio, but obviously I'm not going to be able to use this quilt. Now, I have tried to tune into some shortwave bands, but with this coil, that's just not going to happen. I'm going to need a smaller coil for that, and I can make one of those. Also, long wave. I will need a much longer coil, obviously. However, I am really quite happy with how this is performing so far. So next time I'm going to try and modify this so we can get shortwave and longwave reception. Also in a future video, I'm going to be revisiting... going to be revisiting this radio, see if I can make that work. That's it for now, so until next time, goodbye. In this video, 
waffling along has already been over 20 minutes, would you believe? And this is without the waffling that I did about how this actually works. So anyway, until next time, goodbye. And finally, because I know I'm going to get hammered with questions about this if I don't post it, here is the schematic.